Hi everyone and welcome to learn A-level biology for free with Miss Estrick. In this video I'm going to be going through the correlation coefficient which is one of the three statistics that you need to know for A-level biology. So if you do want a copy of this summary sheet just click the link in the description to MissEstrick.com and head over to the math section. This just goes through the three stats and how you would approach any question linked to them. But first, let's have a look at how you decide which statistic should be used. And this flow diagram just takes you through how you know which of the three statistics you would be using. And in this video, as I said, we're just going through the correlation coefficient. So if you have continuous data, meaning you're taking measurements, um, and you're looking for an association or a correlation, between those two measurements, then it would be the correlation coefficient. So for example, if you were looking at, is there an association between temperature and enzyme rate of reaction? And that's one of the examples we're gonna use later in this video. Now for AQA, you don't have to know how to do the statistic for the exam, because that would take way too many minutes of a biology exam on maths. So instead, what they state you need to be able to do is justify when you would use each statistic. So justify your choice. You have to be able to write a null hypothesis for the investigation. And then if they give you the statistic result, you need to be able to write a conclusion. So the correlation coefficient is based on data where you'd have either positive correlation, or if this was the other way around, going from high to low, a negative correlation. And the whole point of statistic is, if we have a look at these three graphs, quite clearly, the first one is a strong correlation. Number two is a weak correlation. Number three, no correlation. But scenarios like number two, if we had just a few more data points lower down, it's then difficult to know, do you have a weak correlation or no correlation? And the statistic enables you to have a answer where you can say if it's a significant correlation or not. So to justify your choice of a statistic, as we said, you would be using a correlation coefficient if you have two continuous variables that you're looking for an association between them. So that would be your one mark of why would you be using the correlation coefficient. We're going to go through a whole worked example to look at how to write a null hypothesis and the conclusion. And this example is linked to require practical one, an investigation into the effect of, and I've picked temperature, on enzyme rate of reaction. So step one, you need a null hypothesis. So this would be, you're stating there is no pattern. And in a correlation um, coefficient, the pattern is correlation. So we'll be stating there is no significant correlation and you always have to say between the two variables. So between the temperature and enzyme rate of reaction. So this is the null hypothesis we're gonna do the statistic based on to see do we accept that this is correct or reject that it's not and there is actually a correlation. So I've used this particular data. We've got seven different temperatures from 10 to 70. And here are the rates of reaction. Now, as I said, you don't actually need to know this formula. You wouldn't be asked to calculate it at all, but I am gonna go through it with you because you could be asked to use this formula to write up one of your required practicals um, throughout the course. So this should help with that. So a capital N is the number of pairs of data. So we have got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pairs of data. D is the difference in the rank. Now that is what we need to go through. So we are gonna have a look at a complete work through example, just to let you know your, now I'm using Spearman's rank for the correlation coefficient and RS is short for Spearman's rank. Um, the RS value will always be between minus one and plus one. Plus one means it's a perfect, perfect positive correlation minus one is a perfect negative correlation and if you get zero it's no correlation at all 
And then you can get values between the zeros and one, which indicate how strong or weak it is. And then we'll compare it to a critical value table to say whether it's significant or not. Next then, as I said, we'll go through a whole worked example of how you calculate it, in case you need this for a practical write-up. So the first thing you need to do is rank your two sets of data. So you rank it from lowest to highest. So we've got the temperature, 10 to 70 is already in order, so that's already ranked, so 1 to 7. The rate of reaction, though, is um, as you took it, as you measured it, so it's not in order necessarily. Now, the first one does happen to be our lowest, so 5 is rank number 1. 13 is rank number 2. However, we have at temperature 30 and 70, the rate of reaction for both of those is 28. So if they're the same, they need to have the same rank. And the way that you do this is you look at which ranks they would fill up. So it'd be rank three and rank four. And then it is the average of those two ranks. So if we do the average of three plus four, which is seven, um, it would be 3.5. So that now means position three and four are taken. So our next highest is 30 and that would take rank five. 35 is rank six and then we've got rank seven. D is working out what is the difference between the ranked values. So 1 and 1, there's no difference. 2 and 2, there's no difference. But then we've got 0 0.5, 2, 2, 1, and 3.5. Then we square those differences. And then we add all of that column together. So the sum of D squared. And in this case, that is 21.5, just adding up that column. And now we can input that into the formula. So 6 times 21.5 and n was our number of pairs, we had 7. So then if we actually do that stage, um, this is what we'll be dividing by. And our final RS value is 0 0.616. Now at this stage, we can't tell if that means we have a significant correlation or not. We know that because it's a positive value, it is a positive correlation if we have one. And it's almost halfway between zero and positive one. So if it is a, a significant correlation, it's a very weak one. To work out then if it is a significant correlation or not, you have to compare your calculated RS value to a critical value in a critical value table. So what we have here is um, lots of different examples of how many numbers of pairs you might have. For us it's seven and then you have a selection of values for that number of pairs and those correspond to p-values. So each of these columns is a different p-value. And what a p-value is, is the probability, so p is the probability, that the correlation that you have is due to chance or not. And we always have to compare at A level to a p-value of 0 0.05. And what that p-value means is you have less than 5% probability, so 0 0.05 is 5%, 5% probability that the correlation you have is due to chance. Or in other words, that means you can be 95% confident it's not due to chance and therefore it's significant. I'm going to go through that with the results that we have and hopefully it'll be um, a bit clearer. So our S value, that was our calculated value. In this example, our RS value is 0 0.617. We have seven pairs of data that we were comparing. So we need to read off the seven pairs of data row. And as I said, you are always comparing to the p-value of 0 0.05. That is what we call the threshold point to be able to decide if it's a significant correlation or not. And our critical value at that p-value is 0 0.6786. So a critical value is your threshold point. And what we mean by that is you have to have an RS value either equal to the threshold or exceeding the threshold 
to confirm it is a significant correlation. So in our example, our calculated value of 0.616 is lower than the critical value of 0.6786, which was for the p-value of 0.5. So that doesn't exceed the critical value. That means we haven't reached or exceeded that threshold. So right in your conclusion then, you would include this statement here where you're showing that you have compared your calculated value to your critical. Then you need to say what that means. So in this case, that means we have more than 5% probability that the correlation we saw is due to chance. And because we have more than 5% probability, that means it's not significant. So we have to accept the null hypothesis. So increasing the temperature did not always result in an increase in the rate of enzyme controlled reaction. And we do not have a significant correlation. So this is more likely what you'd be asked to do in the A-level exam, use the critical values table, or they might just tell you your result um, does exceed a p-value of, and they'll tell you the p-value and you have to state what that means. So p equals 0.05, that is the value you have to compare to, to determine whether you can accept or reject the null hypothesis. However, if your calculated value was greater than the critical at 0.05 and even lower percentages, then you would put that in your conclusion. So for example, this column, the p-value of 0.01 is 1%. So if your calculated value did exceed the critical value in that probability, that p-value, you'd then be saying there is less than 1% probability it's due to chance, so you're 99% confident. So one more example just to show you how this often comes up, in particular on paper three. So we've got an example exam question. A student is investigating whether the concentration of glucose bacteria are grown in had an effect on the bacteria population size. And the data we've got then, we can see we've got a scatter graph here where we've got concentration of glucose against the number of bacteria. And the student did a statistic on their data and their calculated value equaled the critical value at p equals 0.05. So that's all the information. The question is, the, so the student, they concluded that the more glucose you add, the more bacteria there'll be. Do you agree with this conclusion? Use all the information provided. So that's really common to be asked, do you agree with a conclusion they give you? And what they're actually asking you is evaluate. So you need to pick out from the graph and from the statistic evidence which supports the conclusion and evidence which would make you doubt that conclusion. So in this example, the first thing is what supports that conclusion. So the graph does show a positive correlation between concentration of glucose and the number of bacteria. So that is one piece of supporting evidence. However, you can see on this graph that the results overlap. And what we mean by that is for the same concentration of glucose, there are multiple different results for the number of bacteria. And what that means is there was a big range in effect. So that would be evidence that would make you doubt that that conclusion was valid. Next then, we need to use the information about the statistic. So in this case, they said a p-value of 0.5, so not 0.05. So what that means is the correlation coefficient showed there was 50% probability that the correlation was due to chance. Now, if that's 50% probability it's due to chance, that means you can only be 50% confident, and that is no way near enough confidence. You have to be 95% confident to say it's significant. So therefore, this is not a significant correlation, um, and I've just added in there as well, because you have to be have less than 5% probability it's due to chance. So these are really common questions, these evaluate or do you agree um, style questions. So I hope you have found that helpful today. 
There's going to be more statistic videos coming up, so to make sure you don't miss them, click on the subscribe button just here. And if you have found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up.